Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization 6 tips video where today I'm going to be giving you three tips to help you win the early game. This is sort of a culmination of all of the other tips videos that I've been doing thus far and a good way to end off my coverage of the early game where we will next on move into the mid game. Before we get into the video today, I would just like to let you all know that if you would like to support the channel and help me produce these videos, you can check out any of the links in the description below. I've got one there just for direct donations, and I've got one where you can go to my store page to purchase either Civ 6 or any of its DLCs or a number of other strategy games in which I will receive a kickback from. So uh, both of those are great ways to support the channel and just help keep this content flowing. So first off, let's talk about why the early game is important and why you should generally want to win it. And this is actually pretty self-explanatory, and it's really just that the early game sets up the path for the rest of the game to follow. So if you have a very strong early game, you're going to have a much easier mid and late game. This is really beneficial because the mid and late games often can get more complex as you get a lot more options for more districts to construct, for more buildings to construct, and more wonders you know, to consider as well as you get closer and closer towards the end of the game. So having a, a strong early game and making sure that you secure yourself a lot of leeway can make it so that you can afford to make a few mistakes later on when things get more complex and you're not really going to be punished for it too hard and you're still going to have a pretty decent shot at attaining a victory. The first tip that I have for you to secure the early game is to get information. The reason for this is because it is almost impossible to play in a productive manner if you don't know what is around you and what opportunities you have. Scouting out the nearby land can make it much easier to see what your options are uh, for getting ahead in the game, and for this reason I recommend that you produce a scout as the very first thing that you build. You can check out my other Civ 6 tips video titled Early Build Order for more information on the first things that you can build. As you're scouting out the land, one thing that you should take note of is that opponents' borders will be passable before they reach the Early Empire Civic. This means that before your opponents reach Early Empire, they will have open borders with you. Um, also keep this in mind that before you reach Early Empire, anybody will be able to move through your land. You can make use of this fact by taking your scouts through your opponent's territories and locating cities and identifying possible vulnerable locations or land that you would like to take from them in the future. Scouting is also important for error score, as finding goody huts, natural wonders, or new continents can secure error score and keep you out of a dark age. For more information and strategies on getting information in the early game, you can feel free to go ahead and check out my Civ 6 tips video titled Early Scouting. Moving on to our second, and in my opinion most important tip, we have expand as much as you possibly can. Expansion is the single most important thing to a game of Civ 6 due to how much less viable it is to play tall. If you're new to the Civ series and are unfamiliar with the difference between playing wide and playing tall, a wide playstyle involves settling a larger number of cities, usually greater than 5 or 6 in the case of Civ 6, um, but keeping those cities at a lower population so that the population amenity requirements do not become unmanageable. Playing tall involves settling a smaller number of cities but growing their population as large as you possibly can so that the cities can work more tiles and produce more yields as a result. Since core yields in Civilization VI, such as science and culture, mainly come from districts, and you can't produce two of the same district in a single city, more cities gives you uh, more availability to produce more districts and thus directly produces more yields, which is why playing wide is the more viable of these strategies in Civ VI. I recommend expanding uh, very rapidly in the early game as this will give those cities that you uh, settle or conquer more time to develop throughout the game so that by the time you reach the late game, they're well built up and strong cities. And in this period of the game, you're going to be having more important things that you're going to need to produce, so you're not going to be able to uh, have time to produce you know, basic things such as granaries or things of those sort that kind of help build the city up. Another thing to note is that expansion does not purely have to be with settlers. One of the other really viable things and really meta things that you can do in Civ 6 is expand militarily by attacking one of your nearest neighbors. Utilizing early aggression can be beneficial as you'll gain cities and territory while also building up a military that you can then use later on in the game for further aggression or you can use it for defense uh, if someone else in the game should decide to attack you. The other nice thing about doing early aggression is that it's going to weaken another player in the game and make them less of a threat as you move forward. Early aggression is more viable on some civs than others, and more viable in certain situations than others, but if you have a neighbor that's within maybe, you know, 8 tiles of your cities, I would definitely recommend that you consider playing early aggression. You can check out my video on early war for more information on this topic, and you can check out my video on expanding your empire for more information about settling other cities. 
My third and final tip for winning the early game in Civ 6 is to have a plan. Having a plan can streamline your game and clean up a lot of inefficiencies that you otherwise would face. In the Antarctica Summer Update, improved map tacks were integrated into the game and they make planning out your game so much easier. As you scout your territory, look for spots where you can settle cities and pin those locations so that you know where to send your settlers later as you produce them. Keep in mind that you want to look for spots that are along fresh water or at least coastal water so that you get more housing, and keep in mind that your cities must be more than four, or four tiles or more apart. Pinning out these locations right now makes it so that you don't have to second guess yourself while your settler is moving around, and it's going to prevent you from accidentally settling in a spot that is non-optimal, at which point you obviously can't move the city. Um, be sure to also locate district spots with high adjacency bonuses and pin them so that you don't accidentally place something else on that tile or remove a feature that will provide adjacency bonus, such as woods to a holy site. Have an idea for one or two victory types that you'd like to go for and identify any key wonders and texts that can give you a head start on attaining those victories. Also keep an eye out for unique units, districts, buildings, or tile improvements that may be uh, able to give you a major spike in your civilization's power that you can use to your advantage. Being organized and focused can majorly smooth out your path to victory and give you a clear guidance on what your next steps can be throughout the game. For more information on planning out the various things throughout the game, you can check out any of my uh, Civ 6 district videos for information on uh, district adjacency bonuses and where good spots for them are, and you can also once again refer to the Expanding Your Empire video for more information on good settling spots. So hopefully these tips have been helpful towards you and have helped you learn things that you can apply to your games of Civ 6 to give you a much smoother time in the early game. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.